But beyond the Star Trek stuff, which is a, a, as great a gig as anybody could have, but yes. beyond that, what would you like to do? Uh, well, uh, I had a chance to direct Star Trek V. Uh, I directed a large motion picture. I've done a fair amount of directing in the theater and in television, but a large motion picture has carries with it a, a cachet and a, a f time to, although not so much in this case, time to do to do it better. And a director has the ability to bring his vision to the screen to some extent. I would like to do that more. Uh, I discovered what I knew all along, I guess, that I wanted to direct films, uh, lifelong ambition, buried somewhere, uh, hoping against hope and not allowing myself to dare even think that it would be possible. As a result of this gig, uh, it's possible. And the television show 911, which isn't a series, but you've shot three or four shot, of them, right? Uh, three. Um, it's on CBS uh, called uh, Rescue 911, and it's actual f calls into those uh, paramedics and police and, and firemen who answer the call to 911. It's really an, uh, it's an exciting show because it's camera verity. I mean, you're there. You're hearing the call. You're hearing the people asking for help, and your camera's following it. In some cases, the actual, uh, the actual event and in some cases a reenactment by the people themselves, but you're hearing the actual call. But the value of the, uh, uh, of the show, beyond the fact that it's uh, staggering to look at, is why you should call 911 and why sh you should avail yourself of that number. It's uh, an interesting show. What's the uh, most fantastic bit of heroism that you've encountered in researching that show and the stories that you decided to follow? I guess the most the one that leaps to my mind was a uh, flood in Texas, a raging river. Uh, the camera was actually there. The cameraman was there. There was nobody else to help. So the cameraman himself, in a helicopter, got onto a cable, was lowered down as these kids were clinging to the trees, and the force of the water, you know, you sometimes think, well, I mean, if you just floated and swam and got to the shore, it doesn't yeah. seem that bad. But you could see the water raging by the by the by the tree and the, the and wetting the feet, the people clinging to, the, and this cameraman lowered like something out of Vietnam, coming to the and then grasping and then going uh, and saving people and then losing one girl who could didn't have the strength to hold on and the despair of the man trying to save uh, the girl who was swept away and you saw us. I mean, it was just it was mind-boggling. As I went down, all I could see was scared kids. They were just all over the place, and everyone was yelling, get me, get me. The rescuers were lowered, knowing that if they got caught in the trees, they would be cut loose. Sergeant McKenzie first tried to reach 16-year-old Scott Chatham, already weakened by leukemia and chemotherapy. And a different experience for an actor because even if you play a role that's based on a true-to-life character, and even if you get deeply into it and have to experience those emotions, it's not as it's happening. You're witnessing something that actually occurred. Uh, I've often told people who've asked me to, uh, well, what's, you know, well, how should I, what, what, what's acting, what do I do? I say, watch a, watch a child, the ingenuousness of a child. And there are instances on these shows where you see people who are entirely themselves there's no nothing between you and the and the person there's just that person and they do things in real life that no actor could possibly imagine or do i mean the calls the colors in the calls the co the emotional colors in the calls uh, a child calling and saying help me and then getting irritated at the person trying to help because they didn't understand mm -hmm. i mean the choices would be so phenomenal that you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't write it that way. They, they, they wouldn't accept it. People wouldn't accept it. We'll be back. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. But, all right, fine. <laughs> and on that note, now, didn't Spock bite the interplanetary dust in one of the Star Trek movies? And yes. now, now he's back. Now, now he's got a whole new mouthful of teeth, and he can bite it again. So Vulcans have 
more Who knows teeth. how many lives. That's right. Or teeth. Or careers. And on that fittingly obtuse note, and it has been a strange half hour, has it not? Thanks to William Shatner and to all of you, and see you later. Star Trek V in June. Join us tomorrow night for a ride across town with former taxi driver Mary Lou Henner. Accommodations furnished by the Sheraton Universal Hotel, the official hotel of Universal Studios. On your next visit to Hollywood, visit Sheraton Universal Hotel, the home of the stars.